Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video I want to teach you about queue data structure. So I am going to show you how you can use and create STLQ in C++. And I also want to share some examples of where you would want to use a queue. So what kind of problems you can solve with a queue data structure. Because from what I've seen, a lot of the people learn and understand the concept, but then they struggle with the application of that concept, which means that they don't recognize the situation where they need to use a specific data structure to solve that problem. So I am going to share that as well. And also, at the end of this video, I prepared a task for you that you can solve using a queue data structure. And the person with the best and most creative solution is going to get a shout out in my next video. So make sure to check that out as well. If you have been following me for some time, you already know that I like to explain all the little details about the code. But I also understand that there are a lot of the people who don't have either time or knowledge to write all of the code, but they still want to create real modern applications with C++. So what I would recommend is to try out C++ Builder. I will put it in the background and I will also share a link in the description. You can use it in order to design user interfaces and create multi-platform applications uh, with less code. So you can basically drag and drop a lot of the components, which will save you a lot of the time. And I will share my link in the description. You can use it to get 30 days free of C++ Builder. You will have to register and answer a few questions related to how you plan to use C++ Builder. And then you will get tips and tutorials that will help you to get started. So uh, you can try it out just for fun and see what you can build with C++ Builder. Again, all the details and the link will be in the description. So that is something that I wanted to share with you. And now I want to explain what is a queue. A queue is FIFO data structure and FIFO means first in, first out. And this is also known as first come, first served. And this means that the elements that are at the front of the queue will be pushed out first. So those elements will be processed first, and then the ones that are at the end, they will be served last. Now, an example of a queue, a real life example, is any queue that you can think of. For example, a queue in a bank. So people who are standing at the front of that queue will be served first. So first, second, third, fourth, and so on. And then new people who come into the bank will stand at the end of that queue and they will be served last. An even more important question is when do we use queues in programming? And the answer is very simple. Whenever you need things to happen in the exact order they were called, but your computer cannot keep up with the speed and execute those things fast enough, you are going to put those things in a queue. The most common example of this is the way that printers work. You already know that you can send multiple pages to print, but because printer is very slow and it takes 5 to 10 seconds to print out each page, all of the pages will be waiting in a queue and they will be waiting for their turn to be printed. So pages will be printed from the front of that queue, so page 1 and then 2 and 3 and 4 and so on. And if you decide to add new pages, they will be added at the end. So this is the way that linear queues work. New pages or new elements are added at the end and they are removed from the front of that queue. Something that I have used queues for is to process different types of transactions that arrive very fast so that computer cannot keep up with that speed and process them fast enough. And those transactions can be online orders or tickets or receipts or anything of that type. So what you can do is you can put, let's say, those online orders in a queue and then you start processing them at the front. So you take first order and then you create a receipt or you ship it, do whatever you need to do in order to process that order. And then you are finished with that order so you can move to the next and the next and the next. And you do that until you come to the end of that queue and new orders that arrive, you are going to put those at the end of the queue. So that is how queues work. And unlike stack, which is LIFO data structure, which means last in first out, a queue, which is a FIFO data structure, so first in first out, is very fair way of 
processing data and requests. And if you want to learn more about Stack, I will leave a link here which you can use um, to learn more about Stack in order to be able to compare Stack and Q. So as I said, at the end of this video, I prepared a task for you that you have to solve using a queue. And the person that has the best and the most creative solution will get a shout out in my next video. But that also means that now I have to show you the code so that you understand how to solve that task. So let me very quickly write out all the code and then I will be back in order to explain how everything works. So here is the code, and now I'm going to explain every single line. The first step is you need to include a library called Q. So in order to be able to use STLQ, you need to include a library which is called Q, and then you will be able to create queues. And as you can see in my main function, I have created a queue of integers, which is called my queue. And there are five functions that I want to explain that are related with queues. So the first one is called push and it is used in order to add an element at the end of the queue. That is the first function. Second function is called pop and it is used in order to remove an element from the front of the queue. And then a function called size which tells you the size, so how many elements your queue contains. And then a function called front which gives you the first element of your queue, and then a function called back, which gives you the last element of your queue. So, as you can see, here I have created a queue of integers called my queue. I have added three elements. I have pushed three elements in my queue. And here I am testing the functions that I just mentioned. So a function that gives me the size, and then the first element and the last element of my queue. And here I have separately created a function that will print the entire queue. And that is this function here. So if I open it, as you can see, it receives one parameter, which is a queue of integers. And that parameter is called queue. And inside this function, I am using while loop in order to iterate through all of the elements of this queue. And as you can see from this condition here, it says that I will be iterating through this while loop while my queue is not empty. So while my queue has elements, I will be iterating through those elements. And in each iteration, I will get the element from the front of my queue, I will write it out, and then I will pop that element. And as I said, this function called pop is used in order to remove an element from the front of your queue. And I am doing that while this queue is not empty. When this queue becomes empty, that means that the while loop will end and I will just write out an end line and return to this line here. Okay, so I am now going to run this program in order to see the output. Okay, as you can see, it says that size is three, first element is one, last element is three, as you can see here, and then the entire queue looks like this. Okay, so that is how you create and use STLQ in C++. As I promised, I also have a task for you, and I want you to solve this task using queues, and the first person with the best and most creative solution will get a shout out in my next video, so leave your solutions in the comments. And the task is a program that represents your daily schedule. So you are going to create a program that allows you to add tasks at the end of the queue and remove them at the front. And those tasks need to be performed in that specific order. So your daily schedule can look something like wake up at 7 a.m. and then eat breakfast and go to work at 8 a.m. and then work until lunch break. At 12 a.m. you have lunch break where you can, for example, run some errands, which is something that I do very often at lunch break, um, and then work some more. And at 4 p.m. you have gym, for example, like I do. And then at 6 p.m. you come home, take a shower, make dinner, and so on. So. I want you to create that program and the first person that has the best and the most creative solution will get a shout out in my next video. So I wish you good luck with solving this task. 
If you need help or if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comment section. And give this video a thumbs up for more tasks and more programming lessons. And also, let me know if you would like to watch a video where I review your code. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in some other video. Bye!